Hi everyone, good morning. It's Margaret Manning here and welcome to Mornings with 60 and Me. Today is Sunday, it's October 30th. So welcome to almost the end of the month. Um, I hope you're doing well today. I've actually got my cup of tea uh, this morning. I'm trying something from my uh, Swiss collection and I love how um, they always tell you what the tea is meant to do rather than what the ingredients are. <clears throat> Excuse me. So uh, for example, this is Moments of Joy. And this is um, apple, elderflower, has fennel and something called Nana Mint which I've never heard of, and also it's got vanilla. So it's really nice tea. So that's my tea for the morning. Hope you've got a cup of something interesting there that you're drinking as well. And before we get started, um, I would really like to welcome all the new women that are joining us here on Mornings with 60 and Me. Uh, we get new people all the time. And I wanna make sure that you know that we do a lot of other things uh, on 60 and Me, uh, in addition to the morning show. We also have our Facebook community, about 90,000 women there, lots of conversation. We have a Twitter account. We have a, over, I think, 7,000 people now that follow us there. And also we've got a, a YouTube channel, <clears throat> excuse me, um, that has got like 500 videos on it, lots of topics, interviews with, um, you know, everyone from brain surgeons to uh, beauty experts and uh, everything in between. And I you know, just wanted to make sure you know that we have a lot of other things going on on 60 and Me. So that's, that's important. Um, I also would like to let you know that we've got a little gift coming at the end of the show today, it's something new. So check uh, and wait till the end and I'll tell you uh, what it is and how to uh, receive it. But uh, I just want to say, again, thank you for being here. We'll get on with the morning news and then I'll tell you some feel good stories. And also I've got a quote at the end of today that I think is going to leave you with goosebumps and is going to hopefully get you started not just on a new day, but on a new life. I promise you, you won't be disappointed. So uh, let's go through the news. First of all, in, <clears throat> excuse me, in Belgium. Uh, Belgium, uh, as you know, has been struggling uh, to get everyone in, in line to sign the CETA trade agreement with Canada. Finally got the, their region in Winona, Winonia to agree that it was a good deal and there has been approved. Now today, Sunday, uh, President, uh, Prime Minister Trudeau from Canada is going to be in uh, Belgium signing on behalf of Canada, of course, and the 28 European Union countries that agreed to it. So this is an interesting step forward uh, on the trade front. It's going to actually help, or, or it was going to at least make the situation more um, straightforward for a, a potential trade agreement with the United States, which is, <clears throat> which is being proposed. Now, um, in Spain, there was an election yesterday. Well, it wasn't an election. It was a, a validation by the uh, Congress in Spain that the conservative leader, Rajoy, would continue as prime minister. For 10 months, their country has been in deadlock for um, uh, uh, just getting anything done in, in uh, government. But the socialists agreed to not um, oppose him this time. And now he's pulling together a coalition. So it's going to be, again, a balance between both sides. The country split, but he is going to be in charge for the, no, you know, as going forward. In Iraq, uh, the Shiite um, uh, forces, Shiite militia, has started a new front on the attack from Mosul on the west, west side. Uh, they're trying to cut off the um, transport links between um, Syria and uh, Iraq and, you know, just try to prevent uh, goods and um, troops from coming across. So that's a new development there. But, you know, I think we've, we've already agreed that this is going to be a long, long uh, journey. And uh, the story is simply that um, a lot of citizens are being affected in Mosul. They're being um, killed by ISIS um, uh, military who don't agree when they don't agree with their rules. And uh, they're also using uh, people as human shields. It's really not a nice situation, but uh, it, the coalition army is moving forward. <clears throat> Excuse me, everyone. <clears throat> I have a cough um, and a little sore throat and cold this morning. So please, I apologize for my little um, sniffles and cold um, coughs here. Uh, forgive me. I know it's annoying. So anyway, uh, it's annoying for me. Um, the Yemen conflict, um, this has been going on also for, for months and years, the fighting between the government and uh, the Houthi rebels. And the UN put together a proposal saying that they... Um, uh, should, that the Houthi rebels or Houthi um, group should be included in the government of Yemen. And the Yemen government said, no way. And so now they're back to fighting again. That's Yemen, again, in a very important part of the world. Um, in the United States, uh, as you probably all know, the Clinton camp is um, pushing the FBI very hard to reveal what exactly they're um, investigating with new emails they claim to have found. 
Uh, it's a very delicate timing. Uh, there's a lot of uproar about whether it should have been announced at this time so close to the election because no one really knows what the emails are about or whether they will impact the, um, you know, the decision uh, to, for, towards Hillary Clinton in any way at all. But anyway, that's the United States and I'm sure everyone's a little bit on edge with this one because it's now getting close, 10 days. Um, in Turkey, just a quick note on Turkey, um, they're, they're um, putting all their effort together now to deal with the people who tried to uh, have a coup you know, in, back in July, but they've now said that they might bring back the death penalty for people who were charged. This is big news because it will really go against the NATO values which um, uh, you know, Turkey is part of, and that's something that, um, in, that will come out in the future if, if they do decide to reinstate the, um, the death penalty. In Syria, the rebels have um, in Aleppo have started a, a big push to try to take back parts of Aleppo from the government forces. Uh, interesting news there, development is that well, I've read that um, the, the Syrian government wants Russia to continue bombing in Aleppo. But President um, uh, Putin has said he doesn't want to do that. He wants to ke keep the truce that they've got in place uh, uh, honored. And also he says they need more humanitarian aid in Aleppo. So that was an interesting uh, interview by, um, by Mr. Putin. Uh, now, this is an interesting story for you who have uh, never been there, but Iceland. Iceland is an interesting country, very innovative, and it's um, really picking up as a cool place to go. But they had elections yesterday. The center-right-wing government has been in power for a long time. In fact, since the um, crash of 2008, when Iceland honestly had such a horrible situation, they had to close three banks, they, they jailed several uh, banking leaders. It, their country went through a huge um, challenge. And this government was being um, opposed by some very interesting groups, one called the Pirate Party, which is a group of anarchists who got formed about three years ago, and also uh, a reform party, which is pro-EU. They want to join the EU. Iceland is not a member. And some of the elections happened yesterday. They thought the, par the Pirate Party was going to do really, really well. They did, they did okay, they're in third place. But um, again, very much like Spain and so many other countries around the world, these countries are split, you know, left and right. And um, no matter who wins, they always are needing to find some kind of a coalition, some kind of working arrangement. So that's the story in Iceland. Very, very interesting place. I'd like to go there one day. Has anybody been? I've heard it's really cool and I'd like to, I'd like to go myself one day. So that's actually the news for today, and um, I think I, I just, you know, there's so many more things I could, I could talk about, but I want to get onto a, a feel-good story for Sunday, for our Sunday. And this is an article I found in uh, Real Simple. This is one of my favorite magazines. I think a lot of you read it too. It's just a magazine about simplicity and about living life with values and, you know, putting um, uh, the focus on people and family and home than, than on stuff, you know, trying to make the best of what you've got. So this was an article that they asked their people to answer a question as to what they do on a Sunday. You know, what are the rituals that they get up to on a Sunday? Today's Sunday, let's have a, you know, have a, a look at what other people might be doing. Now, uh, one person said, you know, she totally reserves Sunday to be a, a, a not an I should do day. Like I should do the ironing, I should do the cleaning, but just as like you don't introduce that concept into your Sunday at all. One is to treat yourself, you know, treat yourself with a massage, just get your, you know, some friends to come over and do give each other massages or just give yourself a self massage. You know, just get connected to your body. You know, maybe buy a little um, uh, spa treatment and put it on your face, a facial or in the bath and, or shower and just pamper yourself. That's the second thing. Next thing a lot of people do is go to church, recharge their batteries, whether it's a church, um, Christian church or any other Muslim or, or Jewish or whatever spiritual faith you, you have, take a day in the week to kind of reestablish and re-energize yourself around those values. Next thing was someone suggested, and I actually do this, is clean out my bag. You know, during the week, I just keep stuffing things in my bag, and then on Sunday, I do actually sit down and tip out the whole bag, and then just put things back in one at a time. Usually, truthfully, I end up with most of the same things back in the bag, but it's kind of a nice um, activity to clear out and just compartmentalize. <laughs> so clean out your bag, that's an idea for today. Another is to um, start the day with an heirloom recipe. 
I remember when my kids were younger, we used to have pancakes almost every Sunday, and it was just a, a family ritual. We just loved our pancakes, and we sat down with, you know, lots of different toppings, and um, it was just a nice uh, activity on a Sunday. And if you've got, you know, family with you, or you can invite them over, um, maybe have, um, uh, you know, just a recipe that your, that your grandparents made on, on the weekends. Just something to remember family. That's a nice idea. The next thing is to change your sheets. That's important. Another thing is to play board games. This is something that I have not done in a really long time. You know, played a game of chess or, or um, dominoes, uh, even like the game of risk or game of life, boulder dash or Pictionary. <laughs> These are all ones I used to love, but um, that's another thing for a Sunday. Just turn off the TV and play games. Just play some games. Another thing is to act like it's Saturday. You know, have a glass of wine. Just have go out with friends. Just you know, just party. Have a have a fun day. It doesn't Sunday doesn't have to be boring and um, you know kind of limiting. You can have a, you can just continue Saturday. Just keep keep going. <laughs> um, another person said to stay in their pajamas all day. Uh, I do this often. Uh, just just stay in your nighty and and you know read or cook, uh, work on the computer clean up pictures on your on your laptop, uh, you know, talk to your friends, call up your grandkids, but just don't get out of your PJs. And also somebody suggested going to the movies in your pajamas. I, I actually think that's a great idea because you, in the winter you can wear a coat, nobody would know, and just sitting in the movie theater with your, your pajamas on, I think would be really cool. Just, just one of my crazy ideas. <laughs> and finally, someone suggested that um, she, bo well, she said that she boils a dozen eggs. Every Sunday, she boils a dozen eggs, and she just has these hard-boiled eggs ready to go during the week, uh, you know, for a great protein meal, uh, snack, just grab to go you know, go to work or out uh, somewhere on a, on a journey, just to take a boiled egg with you, and she boils them all on a Sunday. And actually, that reminds me too, like cooking on a Sunday, maybe making meals that you can freeze for the next week, so that on a you know Tuesday or Wednesday when you're not really in the mood for cooking, you can just pull out that um, I don't know cottage pie or shepherd's pie I should say or a nice you know a stew or or soup and just heat it up. That's another idea. So that's my Sunday. That's my Sunday things. Now I do want to tell you about the little gift I've got for today. Um, we've given you lots of different things away uh, on 60 Me, and I love sharing these things with you. And I actually have something that um, they cost a little bit of money. And so I got some thinking that it might be something that somebody would like to treat themselves with. And that is a contouring brush, a makeup brush. Now, I do know from experience that these are not inexpensive items. So they're not the kind of thing like you might just buy on the spur of the moment, you might think, wow, do I really want to spend that amount on a brush? But um, I'm going to um, give this lovely contouring brush. I'm not going to touch it because I want it to be in your hands. And um, also maybe give you the link to an, uh, a video we did with Ariane Paul on how to apply contouring, you know, where to apply it, whether you apply it here or across, how you can use contouring under your chin. Some really cool ideas. So if you are ready for an experiment with contouring, let me know and I'll choose a name randomly and get this off in the mail to you. So that's that. Finally, 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 I want to leave you with a quote. This quote I read, I read it quite a bit. I read it um, a few months ago and it just struck me as so true. And I wanted to read it because um, it, it, in a way, states for me the challenges we face as women in our 60s the things that we're holding on to, the things that um, we could let go. And it's a quote by Brené Brown. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> and Brené Brown is a writer. She wrote the book on um, vulnerability, and she did a TED talk on this topic. And she's an excellent writer, and I think a very warm human being. This is what she wrote. It's a reminder to us, women over 50, really, or women of all ages. But um, I'll read it out, and I'm going to look, be looking down because I don't know it by heart. But um, this is what she says, Brené Brown. I think midlife is when the universe gently places her hands upon your shoulders, pulls you close, and whispers in your ear, I'm not screwing around, it's time. All of this pretending and performing, those coping mechanisms that you've developed to protect yourself from feeling inadequate and getting hurt, has to go. Your armor is preventing you from growing into your gifts. I understand that you needed these protections when you were small. I understand that you believed your armor could help you secure all of the things you need to feel worthy of love and belonging, but you're still searching and you're much more lost than ever. 
Time is growing short. There are unexplored adventures ahead of you. You can't live the rest of your life worried about what other people think. You were born worthy of love and belonging. Courage and daring are coursing through you. You were made to live and love with your whole heart. It's time to show up and be seen. Okay, so that to me says a lot, and I hope it touched you somewhere. I hope it made you think that the things you might be holding back, the things that you're not doing in your life that you want to do. And that is truly what 60 and Me is all about. We are here to help each other make that, that, that stand, to realize that time is short, we've got to live our lives the way that we want. So that's my quote from Brene Brown. Let me know if you liked it, if you found it useful. I think she's amazing. So my question for you today, before I first of all say thank you, <laughs> thank you for being here, thank you for sitting with me and, uh, and sharing the news and, uh, and some feel-good stories, and uh, thank you for your support. It means a lot to me to you know, read your comments every day. Please tell your friends about Mornings with 60 and Me. Tell them to go up to mornings, um, sorry, 60 andmecom <clears throat> forward slash mornings, and uh, they can join you and get the news first. So have a fabulous Sunday. Hope it's a great day. And here's my, here's my question for you. What do you love most about being a woman in your 60s? Leave your comments in the section below. We'll have a conversation. But just tell me, what do you love most about being a woman in your 60s? I'll join in and we can have a, have a chat. Have a great day, everybody. And I'll see you back here tomorrow on Mornings with 60 and Me. Bye-bye for now.